with this cork, maybe a little wine and a large format camera have anything to do with this tripod story? Keep watching the video and find out. But first, I need your help. Since YouTube changed their algorithms, I have not seen a lot of growth in my channel and I'd like to grow the channel a little bit more. So I'm asking you to please subscribe if you already haven't subscribed. Uh, give the video the, uh, the old thumbs up there if you like the video. Share the video with your friends and of course hit uh, the bell icon so that you get notified of when I put out a new video. And, and plus I love the comments section. Uh, I enjoy responding to everyone's comments and, and helping people out. So please uh, keep that discussion going and uh, make comments even if it's just a one or two word uh, comment. It's always much appreciated and I will respond. So let's get into it. A tripod story. The year is 2018 and I'm over in Europe doing some architectural photography work. I'm only there for two weeks. And I had been shooting on location uh, for about four days when suddenly my Gitzo ball head that I have here, uh, GH1780QR, ended up freezing. Now, it wasn't frozen in this position because I've attempted to use a vise to kind of loosen it up and I've tried lubricants, all kinds of things. Nothing works. As you can see, as you uh, loosen this up, that ball head isn't going anywhere. Uh, so you can imagine how, how I felt when uh, I was out in the countryside and this thing froze up. Um, it was very disheartening and uh, put me in a, in a state of frenzy and panic because, like I said, I was out in the countryside in a very small town. What am I going to do now? So immediately when that happened, uh, after I've done, I was done with the last shot, I ended up calling a few different places in town and no one had any kind of tripod available at all. So I started looking a little bit wider and I found a, a much larger city about an hour away. So I ended up Booking it out there to the city, I found uh, a very beautiful mall and ended up finding two stores that had tripods. Uh, the selection wasn't great, as you'll see from the pictures that I'll put up on the screen, uh, but that's all I had. So I ended up getting this uh, Hama, I believe it's the Star 61 model. I'm not quite certain of that because I didn't make note of it. Um, but it was a tripod head that I believe is a, a video tripod head that is very similar to this one in that it has this overhang here. And the thing to note about that particular tripod is that this part was all made out of plastic, a very flimsy plastic. So <laughs> the uh, camera, when you mounted it up on top of it, ended up really bending and flexing the joint here. Uh, which put it in a precarious position and it was probably going to snap at any moment. So to remedy that, <laughs> I basically ended up opening up a bottle of wine and taking the cork and then shoving it in between here in order to stop the camera from weighing this particular portion of where the base plate sits down and preventing it from snapping. <laughs> and believe it or not, I ended up taking 28 additional photographs using that particular setup and <laughs> I, every shot you know I was wondering is this going to be the shot where the camera just snaps and breaks but thankfully I made it through that entire uh, two weeks of architectural shooting without having any issues at all and if you're wondering oh that probably didn't uh, you know allow me to get tax sharp images and Yes, I was able to get all the images tack sharp, no problems whatsoever. The tripod did its job. It supported the camera, albeit precariously, and thank goodness there wasn't any wind, but it did the job. So this cheap tripod that was very, very flimsy held my camera in place to give me perfectly tack sharp images using an 8x10 view camera. What's my point in sharing this story other than sharing uh, uh, an interesting story? Uh, it's that tripods, although uh, you want to, of course, pick a nice sturdy tripod, do not have to be super heavy like this Manfrotto 475B. Uh, 
and weigh a ton in order to get the job done, nor do they have to be extremely expensive. The lesson learned here is that as long as the tripod is stable and it's not going to allow the camera to move, you can use that particular tripod. So it doesn't matter if you paid $1,000 for your tripod or you paid $20 for your tripod. As long as the camera doesn't move, then it's going to support the camera and you're going to have a tack sharp image assuming that you did everything else correctly. Now, you may disagree with me and you may want to say, well, I want to have the very best tripod out in the market. I want the strongest, most durable tripod, and that's fine. Those are certainly uh, reasons to pay more money for a tripod. But if you're in a pinch like I was, and you've got no other choice but to get this uh, cheap, <laughs> flimsy tripod, then you've got to make do with what you have and make it work for you. Well, as always, thanks for watching and, and I hope you enjoyed this tripod story.